Hi, it's Lori from CustomizedWalls.com and one of the moderators for the interior design community on Google+. And I have a great show for you today. First, I'm going to introduce our Trends moderator. Hi, say hi. Hi, this is Jeannie. I'm with Cozy yes. Style of Chic. Fantastic. And then we have a special, special guest for you. She has been on many different television shows, HGTV, um, Hulu Plus, Bravo. You're, you're, you're like the television ho. <laughs> <laughs> so Kelly Ellis. That's me. Nice to see you. Nice to have you. We know that you've been in uh, doing being very busy doing design camp. Tell us all about it. We want to hear. We want to hear the goods from Vegas. Give us the gossip. Oh my gosh. Well, as you know, Vegas is an amazing market. Jeannie was there. Lovely, yep. looking lovely with the rest of us. And uh, Las Vegas market is an amazing market. You know, we love it so much. Um, Lori and I, that's our home. And so we were delighted to take camp for the first time, our super camp to Las Vegas, and really, really do it up. So um, as Jeannie can attest, it was huge. It was um, better than ever, and market was booming. Um, it was probably one of their best well-attended summer markets ever. Because as you know, summer in Vegas is not exactly cool. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not exactly cool, but it was a, a great market, full of energy. I loved it. I can imagine. And, you know, a lot of people do think that market is kind of too much. Cause, like, you have your fall market and then your spring market. You know, it's in North Carolina and it's in Vegas. So it's awesome to see so many people coming out to Vegas. And I think that's because we're in a really different time right now. I think things are sort of changing. There are trends that are sort of changing. Um, but first, I want to definitely dig deep into uh, your design camp. Tell us, how did you even come up with the idea to start design camp? What is it? And what can it do for designers? We all want to know. <laughs> well, design camp is really the business of design. I mean, we know as designers that we'd rather make things pretty um, and not mess around with the SEO and the marketing and the branding and the, um, you know, all the, the stuff that we don't love doing, contracts and the yucky stuff. And we see, you know, we look for inspiration. We like to see things that are pretty and make people smile. And we, we just hope that that would be all we'd have to do. And the reality is, is that we don't. And so uh, Lori Dennis and I met at Las Vegas Market Speaking. And we decided that we needed to put on our own event and really hit the, the topics that we wanted to hear and just hoped that everybody else wanted to hear the same things that we did. And it turned out that they do. So we had, you know, over 340 designers share our same um, vision for wanting to learn more about business and branding and marketing and inspiration and the latest trends and spend, you know, two solid days um, learning from, you know, top experts that we could pull together, our friends and friends of friends and people who, who love camp and it's just, it has grown into something amazing. So um, the next camp... Uh, is coming up in January. We are excited to be going to the Atlanta market in January. Yes, so I know. Very excited. And um, of course you can go to designcamp.com as you see there underneath my name and check it all out and all the all the information will be there to register and we'll, we'll make sure that everybody gets a good deal. Yay! That's where your first camp was held, right? At I, no, it was held in um, Austin, oh, in Austin, and then we went to Atlanta. Yeah, we did go to Atlanta at one point, and we absolutely loved Atlanta. Great group of people. It was awesome. So well received. Yeah. Well, and I know that you've you've changed. Um, you've added so much material and so much more substance. And I think that even if uh, people went to the first one in Atlanta, the second one is going to be a lot different and yeah, a lot so better as well, right? Yeah. That's right, and you've been, so you've seen us grow, and you've watched us change, and you're right, we have, we've, we're listening, we get a lot of feedback from what people want to see and what they want to learn about, and they're taking furious notes, you know, and, and we just love to be able to bring you that, you know, um, it's, our big thing is about collaboration, and Lori, you, you know that more than anybody, Jane, you know that more than anybody, it's what we do, right, it's what we do, we collaborate, and so, you know, there's no more of the, you know, I've got my design world and you've got your design world and, you know, I'm going to covet what you do. It's more like, hey, 
how did you do that thing? Yeah. And I want to know where your resources are and share with me. And people are doing that. And yeah. that's what we do. We do that. I mean, here. there's still a lot of that going on. But I know. I think that, you know, having Design Camp and opening up um, this whole new world to everybody, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think that the other big thing that people forget is that technology changes. And yeah. so if you went to camp even two years ago, going now, there's just a whole lot more to learn. There's a whole lot um, more that has happened. You know, like Google has been through, I think, like three generations mm -hmm. years ago. So, you know, what you need to know about SEO has changed. What you need to know about, you know, uh, you know, being found has changed. And, of course, like there are all sorts of great new applications and new, um, you know, like look at the web, look at the, how much the web has changed in two years. Like I think more people are searching on tablets, that's definitely verified. More people are searching on phones. Um, you definitely have more graphics out there, more visuals. Mm -hmm. So with Pinterest growing, obviously, things like, like that. So it every every time with any technology, it's going to be a new market because there will be just new things to, to talk about. Oh, absolutely. And, and as things change, Laurie, as you know, and um, Jeannie, you know that we try to get the person that's at the top of their game, who mm -hmm. absolutely knows about the latest, greatest, what's happening, what's coming out, you know, even before it's ready. I want to know what is happening and brewing in the technology world mm -hmm. that we can see and be ready for. And the sooner we get ahead of the curve as much as possible, the better exactly. off we're going to be, you know, because we, we all know as designers, we're we are now just facilitating our vision and not so much, you know, doing too shopping. You know, we're not the mobile stores that we used to be because of technology. So it, instead of running from it, we need to like run towards it. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. I think, and I think that this is a great way for, you know, if, if a business was was going to grow successfully over years, to do this as like sort of a even a yearly, a semi yearly check in. You know, what's changing? What's new? What's growing? Um, what are things that I need to focus on now? Because, you know, you can just create this checklist for yourself. Like, you know, there's just like certain tasks. Like, you have to get Google Local figured out. And you have to get, you know, because that's like yellow pages, basically. If you can't be found on Google, if you don't have local set up, then you're not in the yellow pages, basically. That's like, right. Google owns 85% of search. So knowing these little key things, mm -hmm. but you can tick them off and checkbox them. And then there's always more. Like, um, in the last year, we changed over for, from a regular standard website to a responsive website so that you could see, you know, see it on your mobile, see it on your tablet. And the site I'm working on now for customized walls is even Retina. <laughs> you know, oh, wow. so new stuff. You know what I mean? There's always cool new, cool new, new tips and tricks. So. And there are <laughs> apps and programs and all these different tools that make our lives easier as designers. Oh yeah, and I mean, look at the camp. You 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 know, you're kind of stuck in your own little bubble. How do you know what's out there without talking to other designers, without hearing the experts in their field talking about it, right? <laughs> oh, totally. And that that's what we we try to get a good combination of inspiration and business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you can feel that you've got a little um, an hour of inspiration from, say, like Roger Thomas from, you know, Vegas, I, I was blown away. I was, I found myself with my mouth open, you know, watching some of these designers who were phenomenal. <laughs> and then you switch over to, you know, contracts and really mm -hmm. what you need to know. And so, you know, it's it's tough to get a balance. But I think I think um, you know, with what you do, with what we do, with Lori does, the combination of every platform that we're hitting, live events online events, um, you know, we're, we're hitting it, we're covering all the bases. That's like the spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down kind of thing. No. <laughs> You're applying a little Mary Poppins into your... Yeah. <laughs> and also having that in, um, in a place where, it, you know, you can socialize, you meet people, and, um, you know, you can go there not knowing anybody, and you leave with awesome friends and collab collaborators as well. Oh, so. totally. We you should see the emails that are pouring in, which makes us feel amazing. But we get we get notes just like that from people who said, "I didn't know anybody when I left at camp, and now I've set up a reunion with my table." 
you know, because they're people that they've sat with, you know, for the two days. And, and we have great stories of past campers who have, um, you know, been in Susanna Salk's books. They've been published. They've come out with wallpaper lines together. They've come up with paint lines together that they met at camp. Awesome. Because there are, you know, this like minds. You know if you're going to go to something like, like design camp, you're going to be surrounded by people who have the exact same vision that you do. Mm -hmm. You're in the exact same place. You want to do the exact same things. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's perfect. It's really, it's such a great thing. I'm so excited. And, you know, we always love to help camp as much as I can, we can because, of course, we're doing a little bit of the same thing here at Interior Design right. Community, but different. You know, we do this video thing. And um, she has this great, you know, intensive camp where you really learning, learning, learning for the days you need to. And I think that that is unbelievable unbelievable and I can't wait to see what you're gonna do in North Carolina because I'll be there <laughs> Yay! Well, I'll, be there. I'll be there yes you guys um, obviously will will collaborate and yes, we'll figure out what to do yes. but yeah we'll definitely be a high point as well awesome yeah. awesome news and now let's check in with Jeannie I want to know about the trends what were you seeing at high point I mean at a Las Vegas market it was was it different than High Point? I mean, you've been there as a style spotter, and you're also mm -hmm. our trends moderator. So I really want to know what are you seeing that's changing? Because I'm feeling that there are definitely going to be some big changes this year. Uh, well, I mean, nothing compares with High Point. I mean, it's just huge. It's, it's a whole city. Um, but Las Vegas is um, as good as it is. It's still in its infancy, and it's only going to get better. Fantastic. It's only going to go up from here. <laughs> um, and I did run into uh, a few vendors who were coming in to to scope out space for next market. So that is fantastic. And you know, I've seen. Um, I was definitely watching the press. I actually had a meeting with Google that same week, so I couldn't go. But mm -hmm. I um, I was watching the press come in and. It looked like there were some really big international companies coming in. There were a lot of there was a lot more of the um, like chic, you know, LA vibe there than than North Carolina. North Carolina does have their own style. Yes, yes, definitely, um, definitely. I would say, um, yeah, like you said, it's very chic. Um, LA kind of edgy, definitely a lot edgier than what you would see in uh, at High Point. Um, you know, less of the chinoiserie, definitely a lot less of the chinoiserie, mm -hmm. and and the lacquered furniture, right? Right, Kelly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, definitely more organic. A um, lot of rope, a lot of shell, a lot a lot of agate. Um, incorporated into furniture, so those are trends um, we've been seeing for a while. But I've also saw I've been paying attention to um, definitely the wall covering patterns. I saw you know Andrew Martin was there with his like amazing like gallery wall wallpaper that has the photographs like little. Mm -hmm. I love love that and was drooling all over that. But there are a lot a lot of these finds that were just. You know, incredible statement pieces. Incredible, um, you know, just being a little bit more daring. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot more daring than High Point. I mean, I, I was in New York. I was in New York in March, and there I saw, you know, a lot, a lot of copper. It was everywhere. And then I went to, um, and you know, everybody's been, ta been talking about copper and how that's the new in metal. Um, I was at High Point um, later on later on in April, but I didn't see an ounce of it. But there was a lot of brass. Um, but copper is creeping into the market in, in Las Vegas, definitely. Um, slowly but surely. <laughs> well, that's a really interesting thing, because I actually did notice when I did live on the West Coast, you know, I grew up on the East Coast, but I did live on the West Coast for a period that there, you know, just does travel, you know, from West to East. So trends take a while, and mm -hmm. they usually get really commercial before they come to the East Coast because we, we like things safe. <laughs> we like things well, safe. I think no. they, this is probably different. 
New York takes its cues from Europe, right? Yes. And so it goes there, and then it goes to LA, and then it kind of filters into the rest of the country. Yes. yes. <laughs> right? Go, you know, you'll find it in Boston. You'll find. It. Yeah. yeah. It takes a while to to um for it to be embraced uh, by Middle America, but it'll get there eventually. <laughs> you know, I I wanted to ask you about the metal trends because you know we're watching it. I think everybody's watching it. So we've got gold and brass and copper, and gone are the like silver that you know the matte silver that we were all and the stainless steel that we've all had in our homes for so long. Um, how do you see people really incorporating this trend? I mean, it looks great. I mean, obviously, copper is so hard to take care of, so incredibly hard. I mean, how, how are do you think the everyday consumer is going to? to incorporate it and do you think they're going to be resistant because they remember like their grandparents having brass I mean I remember my grandparents having brass things and then when I went on my own I wanted like stainless steel I wanted it to be you know more clean looking that yellow was gone how, how do you see that generation kind of picking that back up well I mean Right now, with metals, it's all about the patina, you know, that nice, worn, warm look. Um, and so we're not seeking perfection. <laughs> um, back, you know, back in the 80s, it was all shiny and bright, but now it's not like that. Um, you know, we're going for metals that have definitely stood the test of time. Right. Um, so yeah, so what if we if it hasn't been polished in a while, it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm also seeing that people are are combining it instead of just ha you know. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. See that. Like if you went yeah. with like stainless steel and and the the silvers, you didn't go anywhere near the golds and and the brass, and now mm -hmm. they're they're kind of like playing together. Yes. I call it the Tiffany effect. You know, where the, the jewelry that you used to have, where it was like both gold and silver? Yes. Um, I'm yeah, seeing I call it the Rolex effect. There you go. Oh. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> same, same exact thing. So that's what's happening. It really is. I know um, I was uh, looking for countertops or something that was really super flashy. Of course, I was doing a Vegas place. And of course, Cambria um, listened to me, and they I just suggested I, well, I needed a fleck that had a little gold and a little silver. And so I guess it's coming out. It's like the thing that's going to come out and address the Rolex effect. You know, mm -hmm. the fixtures have gold and silver. You see the stuff that's hard. You know, those hard decisions, like you're saying, the appliances. That's an investment. You know, so you better like it for a while. Absolutely, and I can't see people switching over to you know like gold or bronze covered refrigerators. I just can't, I can't see that. See, what I see is, um, you know, the little things, taking the hardware in and maybe putting a little brass hardware in. And that can always be switched out. That's easily switched out. Um, the little, uh, the little things. And the big things, um, you know, you, you're right. You want to play it safe if you're spending that much money on it. Totally. Yeah, but that's, that's for a while. It's been taught not to mix, you know, don't mix your metals, right? So then mm -hmm. they have all of these cool brass trends that are coming out, and they're seeing them in HGTV, and they're seeing them everywhere, and they're thinking, I've got this stainless refrigerator, I've got this stainless dishwasher. How do I put a brass handle on my cabinet, and is that going to look weird? You know, because I've got all the stainless in my in my kitchen, or you know, I've got you know these great stainless lamps that I love, and you know, how am I going to incorporate this cool brass end table? You know, or things like that, where they they um, you know they're worried, I think, about mixing, and that it, that is a t you know that's always been told that that's you know we've always been told that's tacky. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there are appliance companies out there that are now doing the thinking for you where they've incorporated, you know, little brass accents with their stainless appliances. Awesome. And, right? Yeah, <laughs> and and, they, and it, it's a matter of education. It's going to take a while for it to be embraced, but it will. It will. Oh, okay. <laughs>
And the more they see it, the more they'll get it, they'll understand it. But they need to see it for a while. I think so too. And you know, that's the other thing that you think about is that a kitchen or you know, especially kitchen, is such a big investment. It's mm -hmm. wanted to last for a long time. And it's great that you can change out hardware because I mean that's easy. Everybody can do that. But mm -hmm. you think about, you know, these big bigger pieces and how can that play with the hardware and how can that you know, how can you work that together? And I think that that's an awesome idea is to have these little accents because I just don't see on anyone switching over to, you know, full gold <laughs> refrigerator, yeah. full gold dishwasher. Well, the thing that you have to also remember is that um, there is this trend towards you know, going away from the stainless appliances, and they've got colored appliances, they've got, you know, the integrated, um, you know, paneled appliances where you don't see, um, you know, the pan it's, it looks like the cabinet, it's flush with the cabinet. Yeah. So that's a great way of doing it as well. Oh, absolutely. I think, I think you're right, too. Jeannie, I think you're right, Lori and Jeannie, that, that people are really ready to um, make a change. You know, I've seen blue cabinets and blue appliances I've seen people like do it. if they're gonna do it they're gonna do it mm -hmm. and they're gonna go, they're gonna go bold and go big mm -hmm. because they're they I think they are really sick of stainless um, <laughs> I just had this I just had this conversation with a client and just he wants nothing you everything has to be unique if you can buy it at the store don't show it to him mm -hmm. he's that guy <laughs> so I mean I really have to you know where most people be terrified of some things he he's ready to embrace it because he really doesn't want the usual. And I think, yeah. like you like you said, once you see more of it, because that that brass and those copper appliances are gorgeous. Yeah, I mean they're they're gorgeous. Yeah. And I I thought I remember the time when everybody had almond and green, and it was green. like stainless green. Yeah. <laughs> green. Yeah. Remember the green? And I remember my mom saying stainless. It looks like you know spaceship in here. And now of course you know it's commonplace. So yeah. it's just it's a time thing. It's a time thing. But I think if if there's ways that you can change things subtly, like you said, with the hardware or the finishes on them, or the where the manufacturers are getting very very smart to be able to change these things out more mm -hmm. readily and easily, we would be all over it. I mean, it's like there's nothing better than selling a product that has um, longevity. Like, yeah. sell me something that I need to get a new skin for. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm going to keep getting it. I mean, I'm just exactly. you know. Yeah, I'm gonna change it 16 times over. That's what you need to do. Is not don't make it once in one way. Mm -hmm. Make it changeable. And Miss Customized Walls over there knows all about that. <laughs> so you know, you like you want to be able to put it up, and you want to be able to change it. And people right. like that. We're buy, we're the ones for buying phones, you know, over and over again. And I just bought the, you know, I, I'll do it. I, I waited a year. I'll change it again. People like to change. And do something. Mm -hmm. else. I think that this is that's a this generation kind of thing, like the Generation X kind of thing. I think my parents never changed anything. Yeah. <laughs> Sofa for like 20 years, I swear. So I think that our generation, we want to, we want to change things up every few years. We want to change, you know, the pink colors and the sofa and, you know, buy new, buy new things, get new color, you know, do a whole new color theme. And you know, there yeah. are great ways you can do that with accessories, but there are big ways you could do that too. And yeah. I love that you're saying that people are getting bold. That yes. is awesome because I think that, you know, from from I live in in a very rural area. In a very, you know, New Hampshire is, you know, colonials, it's, you know, certain colors. I mean, they're just it's you don't see as much of the daring, you know, design that I actually really love um, mm -hmm. in New England, but I think that um, people are sort of training themselves to, to try these things. I watched even, you know, I can always tell, you know, what people are doing by what my mother is doing. <laughs> you know, because my mother, my mother will try something, you know, like she did everything the safe colors like HGTV told you to do, right? She's like, did everything beige. And then she was so sick of that, she did the accent wall that HGTV told you to do, <laughs> you know? She's like, one wall was red, you know, burgundy or whatever. And now she's like, oh, I'm thinking about wallpapers, you know. And I think it's, they like it in smaller doses, you know. <laughs> for, for sure. And that's that's probably most people. Um, but I, I think, like we were talking about earlier, the technology 
um, changes everything because we have so much access to images that before you'd have to make a trip, go get your magazine done. Trust me, I still love my magazines. However, <laughs> the barrage of, of pictures that we're, we are, have access to is mm -hmm. really open everybody up to like, wow, that looks great. You know, are we, and, you, and then they ask themselves, are we daring enough to do that? And yep. then they call you and say, am I daring enough to do this? And then you have to, you know, kind of hold their hand and, yes, we can do this. You are. So, you are. I love yeah, it. Yeah. I think that I was just saying that to someone else this week. I actually said, you know, I think that people are having that conversation with themselves that they, that they want to try something new, that they want to, you know, get out of the box, but they're not sure how. And I think that's a great opportunity for interior designers because... Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people are so inundated with images from Pinterest to their emails. Everyone has these great images, but they don't really know how to make that happen. They don't right. know how to make that design. Like, I love these things. I don't know how to make that happen in my house. You know what I mean? And they end up going to you know Lowe's or Home Depot or to the furniture store and just like finding a set and just buying everything in that set. <laughs> <laughs> nowadays they've got these apps where you can take a picture of your room and you can see what your room would look like in a certain color. I so love you it. You can put a piece of furniture in there or a piece of, you know, a painting on the wall. Um, and I can just imagine I, I, I was we did a design challenge with Modenis. Uh -huh. uh, it was like a tech challenge. There was a tech challenge part and I my team did not win. But we, t we said, you know, the designer of the future is probably going to sell through an app. And right. we, mm -hmm. we said this is what the app would do and that the person could pick all these different, you know, pieces of furniture and that she she would start selling it, you know, like in an apartment building and then, you know, try to service the whole apartment building. Like, this is what you, you know, this is what you need for these floor plans. Like, here's the different furniture that would fit. Here's the different, you know, cool uh, patterns for the different, different pieces of furniture. And... So we, we thought that that would be such a cool business. And I think that so many people are going to that route of, like, being able to visualize through apps. Yeah. And eventually, you know, I have a very good friend here on Google+, Plus, James Seriously, You should reach out to him because he is from London, and he talks a lot about um, virtual reality, like where you put on the, you know, glasses and you can, like, look literally look around a space. And, you know, he does it for the real estate industry, but... You can imagine what it can do for design, you know, in 10 years that you're going to be like, here's your design, and people put on the glasses and they can, like, look around their house. Yeah. Uh, well, we know that there's so many great apps coming out, and um, there's, I, I happen to be working with a company who um, is putting together an app that I've, I, it will blow everybody's mind. I cannot wait to talk about it. Um, <laughs> but it does things that, that, you know, as we listen to, to designers and, and the end user, you know, the consumer, what they want to be able to do, and it's going to change the game, and it has changed the game, like you said, Jeannie, where people can, you know, envision and start dropping in pictures and dropping in things that they want to do to their own spaces, and it takes the guesswork out of all of it. So you can be that bold, creative person. You don't have to be a, an artist to figure out how your room is going to look or hire a designer, so to speak, mm -hmm. until you need to get down to the nitty-gritty, mind you. Um, but to put things together is a really big step, you know. It's a really, it's a good bridge to be able to do it yourself rather than go and buy the vignette in the big box store and then hope it works because mm -hmm. we've seen that. Yeah, I usually get the phone call after they've gone into the vignette and bought the blue section and then go, <laughs> I don't know why this doesn't work. I thought it was going to look great. Like, okay, yeah. great. I'm glad we did that. So, yeah, hopefully, they, hopefully we get to pair with them before before they do that. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. And, you know, I, last shout-out, because we have just a few more minutes, but I definitely want to talk a little bit about your book, because oh. we, we had that great conversation about, we have a video that you should check out on YouTube, um, mm -hmm. where we talk about Kelly's book, and she does kind of go through the steps of doing these kinds of things and figuring out what your style really is. If you're in that weird spot where you're like, I want to try something new, I would definitely want to be adventurous, but I don't know what to do. I think your your book really does help people. So tell tell us a little bit about that. Do I look skinny in this house? Love <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. It sounds it's crazy, but it's really not because that's how nutty we are, right? We wear our homes like couture pretty much, and it's a reflection of who we are. And we, you know, it's it's essentially that crazy. Um, but yeah, I like to take people through the steps. I kind of try to um, translate what I ask 
my clients and what, what we do, and then let them do it for themselves. So those are exercises to help them decide one, what's our look? What's the function? The function, flow, feel. Those are the three Fs that are allowed in uh, F words that are allowed in design. Function, flow, feel. And so you've got to have those in every room. Or the, you might as well cut out that square footage out of your home. And so when people are ready to embrace a new look or design, they freak out because they don't know what they are or what they want. They know what they don't like, but they don't know what they do like. And so going through the steps and be able to narrow that down and figure out what it is that we do like not only helps them either create it themselves, but also speak to their designers. So that they can at least, you know, communicate well. This is what we we like, this, and we figured it out, and we know to collectively what it is that we want to do and move forward with. And that's huge because, like I say, if you go and buy the blue vignette at the big box store and you put it in your house and go, okay, I don't, even, well, I don't know what happened because that looks horrible. It's because <laughs> you know, it's, it's because they didn't make the effort to figure out what they really want in the first place, rather than what just looks good at the moment. Yes. And so that, and that's what design psychology is, you know. I love, love, love it. Well, thank you so much, ladies. This is our first intro back into our next season of our um, Interior Design Community show. We have it as a happy hour. Drink, drink. <laughs> and uh, make sure you come visit us next week. We have actually a special show. We're talking about the Design Network. And we have one of the one of the stars of the new shows on the Design Network, so we're excited to talk about that. And definitely subscribe to our channel. Visit KellyEllis.com. That's Kelly with an I. Ellis.com. She has a book on there. She has a bio. She has links to Design Camp. You're going to find everything there. So thank you very much, everybody. All right. Bye. 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 Have a great weekend. <laughs>